Scouter Stan. Just thought I'd drop in and, and kind of answer some of the questions regarding blue cards. Now, I know a lot of you den leaders are going to kind of phase out. Don't. Because eventually when you go into Scouts BSA, you're going to need to know what a blue card is. A uh, Blue cards are, are a major focus in scouting. Uh, scouts that are uh, going after merit badges. Now, prior to this, through all the ranks up to first class, it was all scout skills. They didn't need any merit badges. From first class on, all the way to Eagle, and even beyond for Palms and so on, they need merit badges. And that's where the blue card comes in. Now, all the stuff I'm really going to be doing is just the basics, okay? So, but if you want more information, please check down below. I'm going to put a, a link, uh, and that's in the uh, Guide to Advancement. And in there, uh, Section 7 is all about merit badge. It's the merit badge pro, uh, program, okay? That whole thing is handled right there. Um, the blue card is the application, okay? Now, I did have one on the desk. I had two. I have some examples of them. Uh, a blue card literally is the color blue, all right? Now, when they're talking about a blue card, uh, it's the document. It is actually uh, the application for a merit badge, okay? So, see that below. I'm going to put a link down there to a PDF that you can actually fill it out. So if you're an advancement person in your troop, um, you can definitely fill this out. Now, it's not just for troops. It's for uh, Venture and Sea Scouts. They also can get merit badges. Um, unit leaders are the very first person to really talk to the scout about their merit badge. If they have a interest, they will come to the scoutmaster or uh, to whatever unit leader they have, and they will go to them. Uh, that can be designated too. So if you're in a really big troop with like 100 scouts, you may want to get one of your assistant scoutmasters who's gone through all the scoutmaster training and knows everything about that process and is familiar with the blue card process. They could actually be also meeting with them. Um, that can be delegated, okay? We don't want anybody <laughs> exploding or burning out, okay? Um, that's one of the things you can delegate. Um, and of course, the unit leader meets with um, the, the, the scout and the scout can actually um, get assigned whatever merit badge it is, whatever, if it's stamp collecting or um, equestrian or all the different kinds of merit badges that are out there. There's a lot, over a hundred. It goes up and down every year. So that's something that the merit badge is determined during the meeting with the unit leader. Uh, remember that there's always too deep leadership you know, with any meeting with the youth, and uh, keep all that in mind. The blue card starts, now this is, this is a printout of what I have down below, okay? This is actually the three-part process. There's three pieces. Uh, the very first piece is the application. And these two sections here and here are actually filled out in this meeting with the unit leader, okay? This is before you even see a merit badge counselor. You need to have this signed and dated. That's very, very, very important. Also contact information. The unit leader will have a list of all the merit badge counselors in the given area so that he, he, he or she can actually uh, work with the scout on getting the merit badge counselor and that connection. So in keeping that all in mind with the two deep leadership that's very important. One additional thing about um, Too Deep Leadership is that that applies to all correspondence. So if you're doing emails, texting, phone calls, all that stuff should also remain Too Deep. So that's very, very important. Uh, once that's been established, once you've got your counselor and everything, the scout can go off and do the merit badge. Uh, the unit leader is, um, is permitted to place limits on how many merit badges can be done by an individual counselor. There's, you, there's, 
there would be eyebrows lifted <laughs> and questions asked if the scout got the merit badges from only one counselor. We want them to move around. We want them to go to different people, kind of broaden their view of the world uh, through the merit badge process. So the, the unit leader is the only one that can really put limits to how many merit badges an individual counselor can do for an individual scout. So that's important. Uh, merit badge counselors can be, uh, well, they have to be approved through your council. There's no way around that. You council uh, advancement people have to be aware of that and they have to approve it. Uh, there's also training that's required. And in addition to that, they must be current with their YPT, the youth protection. Uh, that's very, very important. Also, age is very important. So uh, if they are under 18, there may be issues, big issues. So that's, that's always considered uh, when they're looking at a merit badge counselor. Um, certified merit badge counselors, um, are, they're registered with the council. Uh, once they start, once, once a scout starts uh, a merit badge, that kind of seals in all of the merit badge requirements. So if something was, ha once it started, once the date has been put on the card, um, the requirements are fixed for about a year, okay? Now, if a scout was to start a merit badge and not complete it, then they, then, then as you know, uh, not all merit badges get completed. Some start and they never get completed. Uh, but if they start and there's a break, the counselor can say, hey, it's been a while, the new stuff is in, we need to do those requirements. So that's between uh, the counselor and the, the scout, if it's a long period of time. Technically, for about a year, everything's kind of frozen in space. So if something happens, say the, the camping requirement changes in camping, don't take it from me, it might happen, you never know. If that changes, goes up or down, whenever the scout started, whatever the requirement was then, that's the requirement they have to complete. That's, that's generally how they do it. Now, some merit badge counselors do say, well, I believe in the new requirements, so I'm going to teach the new requirements. So that's something that they need to work with. But technically, once the merit badge is started, it's time to get it done. If it takes longer than a year, then that negotiation needs to be done, okay, about the requirements. It is very rare, but it does happen. So it's something to be aware of as an adult leader. Um, once they're earned, that's it. There aren't, there's no retesting, nothing like that. If there's a question, if a leader has a problem with that, there is a set form. Please ask your unit commissioner to help you with that. Uh, there is a process there uh, where that can actually be handled. Um, the worksheets. Now, a lot of times when you're doing merit badges, there's worksheets. They have these printed out uh, worksheets where the scout actually writes his notes down. Now the written parts of that can help, but basically the worksheets, um, they're helpful, but they're not required. Okay. They're not like we're going to add a requirement and that's not permitted when you're dealing with merit badges. We're not adding any requirements or changing any requirements. So if something says show or talk about or those kinds of things, those need to be done exactly as written in the requirements. Um, there's, there, there's sometimes that um, the merit badge becomes discontinued. Okay, uh, that does happen. But, and this is to quell any kinds of rumors, okay, if, say, for instance, a merit badge that was offered 20 years ago, all of a sudden somebody was able to find at a tradee or something that merit badge, guess what? You can't earn it because it's discontinued. You can't start a merit badge that's been discontinued. Okay, you can't just say, "Ooh, this is nice. I think I'll earn it." No, that doesn't happen. We we don't do that. 
if it's been discontinued, there's a reason. So it's probably because parts of that have been incorporated in something else. So that's why we don't do discontinued merit badges. Um, on the completion of their merit badges, when they're done, when you have a completed merit badge, um, you want to fill, uh, well, the latter part, this piece right here, this is the counselor's part. It's the, let's number them, one, two, and three. Three is for the counselor. He will actually remove this and there'll be two pieces left. This is retained by the counselor for about a year. Uh, sometimes they will count, they, the counselor will actually ask, when's your 18th birthday? And they'll write it on there in the notes section so that when the when he's going through his pile of of cards, he can say, well, oh, that date, well, that kid's already 18. He's either aged out or got eagle or whatever. So I can move that out and make room for my my new pile of cards okay if you're a very active uh, merit badge counselor that's very important so that's something that's retained by the uh, the counselor the middle portion is for the scout okay that's this part and on the back of that is an actual record of all the requirements okay now the requirements i have one here that my son actually um let me use this. Uh, this is his um, citizenship in the community merit badge card, his blue card for that merit badge. And you can see that everything's been signed off on the back. And that is purely uh, to say that each one of the requirements was done and the date. And then he's got, of course, all the data on the front. He retains this, okay? The very first card, remember when we numbered them one, two, and three? The very first one, this one here, is actually removed and it's brought back to one of two people. Usually it's brought back to the Scoutmaster. The Scoutmaster or the unit leader will take this and get it processed through uh, advancement for whatever uh, type of thing. If it's been prearranged and the Scoutmaster has already, he knows about it, okay, he should be aware of it. Uh, if he knows about it, he could just say, go ahead and take that over to the advancement team. A lot of troops have advancement teams, more than one person, that work on getting all of that stuff entered. Now, one of the other things you may want to do, if you know that there's going to be a big break, say summer break or school starting up in the and the scout's going to be doing stuff like band or, or going on a big trip for a long time, they want to take their card, still in three pieces because they haven't finished it. They're going to take their card over to their advancement people and make sure that all this data, that the requirements that they have done gets recorded. In case this thing gets lost, then this way the scout can pick up where he left off. So it's very smart to keep, keep track of these things. Uh, the blue card, and I, I don't blame them for being obsessed about it because blue cards are important. It's how you advance beyond first class. So if you want to get the star or life or eagle, you have to do merit patches. Uh, by the way, adults do not do merit patches, okay? They can be merit patch counselors. Uh, they can do fun merit patches at summer camp. But that's for everybody. All adults, all kids can actually do underwater basket weaving. It's not an official merit badge, okay? They can do those kinds of things, but they can't do the real merit badges. And there's really no point because there's no advancement uh, needed for merit badges. Be the counselor. Be that kind of thing. That's where they can get involved in it. Uh, make sure that you give those applications in that blue card to the right people. Okay, check in on it. All right, uh, make sure the scout does that. Um, in scouting, uh, we always say that it's a safe place to fail, but we want to make sure they don't. So make sure they don't lose these things. If you find one on the ground, make sure it gets back to the scout. Uh, that's very important. Uh, it's a lot of. It's this represents a lot of work, and that's why another reason why they're kind of obsessed with them. This is the application. When they get this card and it's signed off, because the counselor signs in two places, once this is signed off, this is technically, that is the merit badge. That is the application for that merit badge. So very, very important. 
uh, the blue card should be maintained by the scout, like my son's. He maintained this in a book. Uh, when he got the merit badge, there's an official looking card that goes with that, and the merit badge goes on his sash and all that stuff. So, one of the rumors going around uh, is that the blue card is going away. Um, for right now, that's not the case. Even if you go to summer camp and they get a big printout and they give that to your scoutmaster at summer camp, the summer camp is giving you the printout so that they can fill out the the necessary blue card okay that is what they are doing um so the blue cards at this point at at uh, right now the blue card is how this process works now there is a rumor going around that they're going to go away not anytime soon uh, but eventually, with Scout Book and uh, the electronics and stuff that's going on, that might change. Okay, there might be electronics. I have done since we're in post pandemic. During the pandemic, I did merit badges. I would sign them off on a and and send them in. But we still stayed with the blue card process, even though it was electronic. So that's that's going to be going on for a while. Eventually, just eventually, it will probably go into Scout Book or, or somehow get integrated electronically. So that's eventually what's going to be happening. Now, with all of this blue card craze that's going on with your Scouts, you are there to help them succeed. So uh, make sure, as a leader, you listen carefully to what they're communicating to you and then communicate to them and have them repeat so so that you know that they're retaining the information that you're giving them um, have them take notes you know if they if you're giving them contact information about a counselor uh, that's something that they need to take notes there I, I don't know of any scout that's going to walk around and just memorize exactly what was said the first time so it's very important that as scout leaders, we make sure the scouts know what they're doing and uh, helping them. And I know you do. Uh, you do. I know you do. So keep up that good work. OK, um, th this video is kind of lengthy, but uh, and basic. Uh, if you want more information, please check the link below. Um, I've got a lot of information down there. And of course, with scouting, you know, it's a, it's a growing process, not just for the scouts, but for the scout leaders too. And I appreciate all that you do for scouting. So until we meet again, I'll see you on the trail.